Hi everybody. So I want to talk about the collapsed narcissist and I want to talk about their behavior uh, whenever they are broken up with or, or dumped. Uh, the term collapsed narcissist was given to me today. It's my first time to hear it. I'm, I, I'm assuming that what it's referring to is there's kind of sort of this, this mode uh, or mindset that a narcissist will go into whenever the supplies aren't working out the way that they want to. In the past, I've referred to this as sort of a power save mode or they, they go into like a hibernation. And I believe that's what this is also referring to because the specific question was um, a collapsed narcissist whenever no adequate supply is available or, or something cl closely um, close to that. So what that means is, you know, a narcissist is someone, they're very, very full of themselves. Uh, they, they think they're hot shit, they're hot stuff. They think that they're superior to everybody else. But in order for that, that superiority to remain tangible for them, that means that they have to, uh, they have to validate people's inferiority. They have to validate the inferiority of the people around them uh, in order for th their ego to be propped up. Because, you know, we, we've all been there. We all remember, like, in, in our childhood or, you know, in our young teenage years, if we're competing in competitions, competing in competitions, that, that's what happens, right? When you're, in, when you're competing against uh, other people, you might be, I, I was a drummer in school, so I was a marching band. I, I did fairly well as a drummer. I, I went to state. I was uh, all region. I was all area. Um, I went to state twice. Um, I, I did. I did fairly good at drumming, and at my school, I was the first chair drummer. So I was a, a pretty decent drummer. But then, whenever I went to uh, went to the competitions, especially state, man, there were these guys that I'm surprised their drumsticks weren't lighting up on fire. They were just phenomenal, right? And that sort of put my ego in check my that 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 put my skills in perspective um it you know it lets me know it's like okay just because you're you know just because you're the first chair at, at at your school uh and just because you're in all region when you get to state you ain't shit you know so um it, it's sort of a wake-up call right but a narcissist a narcissist can't really handle that because they the, they have such a low self-esteem to begin with that they need that constant affirmation uh, that they're good. So being at, at state and seeing a bunch of competitors that are better than them would just really mess with their head, right? So with that in mind, uh, whenever a, a narcissist d no longer has methods available to make them their own selves feel special, they go into a power save. So just like if it went back whenever I was a good drummer, uh, I, I could, you know, I could play tap, 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 roo at, at school and everybody would be like, well, you're so great, right? And then I go to state and I try to go and show off to everybody and they're like, you're okay, that's pretty basic. You see what I mean? So it, for me, being a drummer in state, the, the equivalent is I, I don't try to impress anybody. I, I don't do anything. I'm just there. I'm not really trying to engage any of these super awesome dudes because I don't want to get my ass handed to me, um, and I don't want to look don't want to look like an idiot. Uh, and the mentality is is very very much the same for a narcissist when they don't. So whenever whenever a narcissist has no supply. That's a lot like that, that same similar situation of, uh, you know, you're, you're in different waters now. You're in different territory. You're around people far superior to your own self, and you know it. The narcissist knows it. So they sort of just go into this neutral power save mode, same, same as what I did as a teenager going to state. And seeing all of these guys who were far, you know, far superior to me, I, I just didn't engage them. I just stayed off, you know, my own little corner, worried about my own self, practiced my own solos, and and competed, and then I went home. 
Uh, and it, it's the same situation for a narcissist. So when, when there's no supply, uh, they go into power save mode. I, I think the other term is, is collapsed narcissist. Uh, that's how. And then they, it, it's, it's kind of hard to tell who these people are because of the fact that they're no longer being overt in their usual manners. Uh, so how can you tell, uh, how, how can you tell if, you're, if w what you're dealing with is an actual narcissist or someone who is um, just a normal person? And the answer is you have to engage them. There are so, some very telltale signs for people who um, may not be a narcissist, but they're certainly uh, emotional manipulators. You can't necessarily look for the signs and symptoms of an actual narcissist and know they're a narcissist uh, because they're not going to display them. However, you can tell uh, certain psychological signs, their modus operandi, the way they think, and you have to look instead for signs of an emotional manipulator. Um, the signs you look for is, I did another video, some really good ones to throw out there. Try telling somebody no. Uh, regular people, they can handle a no pretty easily. Like, hey, we're having a get together. Do you wanna come tonight? No, sorry, I can't. Uh, you know, I've got plans to clip my toenails. And they're like, oh, weird, but all right, cool. See you later. Um, people who, um, or, you know, vice versa, if, if they come up and they, they want something from you, like, hey, can I borrow your, your phone? Be like, uh, no, sorry, right now, I'd uh, rather not. And they're like, and, and they would push the issue. See what I mean? So people who come up to you who always want you to do stuff, like, like hey, uh, okay, so case in point, um, you know, if you're with somebody, like, say, a boyfriend or girlfriend, let's say you're a guy, and your girlfriend keeps hinting to you that her phone is slow, that she keeps having problems with her phone. I don't know what to do. I don't, blah, 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 blah. You know, the, she, what she's trying to do is she's trying to get her man to say, oh, don't worry, sweetie, I'll save you. I'll fix your phone or I'll buy you a new phone. You know, see, see what I mean? So the way you can tell in that situation would just be like, well, um, you know, there's a, a few re repair shops close by. Take it to one of those after work and see what they say. Um, chances are she won't. But then she'll push the issue the next day and she'll say something like, oh, you know, or she'll, she'll continue to complain about her phone and your presence. And you say, well, did you take it to that shop? And they'll come up with a reason not to. You say, okay, well, I don't know how you expect your phone to get fixed or replaced. Whatever. And then a few days later, she'll come back and she'll start complaining about her phone again. It's like, really? Because I've told you several times how to solve this. Because the thing is, she doesn't, want, she doesn't want to fix her phone. She doesn't want her phone fixed. She wants you to do it for her so she doesn't have to. And there's really no other reason for it other than the fact if she doesn't have to do it, if she can get you to do it, that makes her life easy. So why the hell not? Um, so you got to look for little subtleties like that uh, outside the context of a relationship, a friendship, or uh, a work relationship or a family member, somebody who does that, somebody who uh, brings something to you and you give them, you, you either don't, uh, don't involve yourself. Um, actually, yeah, if somebody brings you a problem or, or comes to you with something and you choose consciously to um, not participate, not to involve yourself. And you even volunteer to tell them where to go to find a solution to their problem. And then they come back to you again. And then they come back to you again. It's the same problem. Because now what they're doing is they're just trying to, to poke at you and get you to do it for them. Not that they can't. They, they can easily do it. And that's what you got to look for. Is this something that you could do? I mean, are you capable of getting into a car and, and turning the steering wheel and working the pedals and going to the store after work? Yes. So why the fuck don't you? Oh, it's different when I have to do that, right? Because, because I, I love you and I'm going to go out of my way for you, right? Now, I mean, in a healthy relationship, this may very well be uh, the, the right choice for you because, you know, if she's perhaps, you know, just shy, quiet, um, or she, if she's, uh, you know, um, insecure or, or not confident uh, in dealing with repair people, that's understandable. But she would also be sh straightforward and tell you that. And it's like, well, why don't you go get your phone repaired? She'd be like, well, I mean, there's no reason why I couldn't except for the fact that, you know, a lot more about technology and 
I'm, you know, once they have my phone, I'm scared that they're going to ransom it or, you know, they're going to, they're going to mess with me. Uh, and so I think, you know, you're just better at, at these types of things. So a normal person would just work it out with you. Right. But you got to look for the signs of manipulation. So, uh, now to talk about how they behave when you break up with them. And I've said this in other videos. I, I'll always say it. there is no breaking up with a narcissist. Um, there is, but when you break up with them, it creates more problems for you. Uh, so you end up, they end up punishing you for making them feel bad. And that's, that's another telltale sign. Um, they feel that, um, that emotions that for you making them feel a certain way, or you made them feel this way is a punishable offense. So you making them feel badly or negatively in any way is a punishable offense and they feel the need to punish you to teach you not to hurt their feelings. Um, that's something that, that children do. Um, and it's something that adults do too. Uh, feelings are not a punishable offense. If you tell somebody, Steve Harvey said this and I love this so much. If you tell somebody the truth and they get mad, not your problem, right? If you tell somebody the truth and it hurts their feelings, it's not your problem. You don't help them as much as you could possibly help them by being completely open and honest. And you say, I'm being completely open and honest with you. It might be painful, but that's the best thing I can do for you is to be completely open and honest and give you this information and let you internalize it and then you decide how you want to feel about it and you don't need to react or respond right away. You know, take some time, think about what I've told you, think about how you feel about it and I hope we can still be friends, you know. Um, so, but you cannot break up with a narcissist because when you do, uh, it's a punishable offense and that's how you end up with stalkers, that's how you end up with creepers uh, that's how you end up uh, getting your, your car fucked with, getting your car keyed, spray painted, whatever else. Um, that's how you end up with uh, somebody showing up to work to embarrass you. Um, they do this because you've made them feel bad. And because you made them feel bad, they're going to make you feel worse. Um, so how to break up with a narcissist. Uh, there's some videos uh, elsewhere in the channel take a look for them. There's one called Stacking Ammo, which is a great, um, great video in my opinion. The way you break up with a narcissist is you don't. You coerce them into discarding you. So you want to get yourself discarded. See, a narcissist is like a gypsy curse. You can't get rid of it. You can only give it to someone else. Uh, and so the same applies. You know, they're a gypsy curse. Uh, you can't get rid of them yourself. You have to wait for someone else to come along. And in the stacking ammo video, and, and in this video, I'll tell you that um, when you start getting close to discard, there's, there's some, some very, very good tips and helpful advice on how to do that. You'll know you're getting close whenever you hear this person complaining about, God, you're worthless. Why am I even with you? Like, you're so pathetic. Like, whenever they start, when they start harping on you for your lack of involvement or your your lack of value value uh value based insults are what you want to look for especially when they're like i don't even know why i'm still with you i mean what's the point of us even being together and you should just be like i don't know um i don't know and so what you want to eventually do is wait till they start going out and cheating that's actually what you want um because once they start cheating, they're going to, like I said before, they want to punish you for making them feel bad. So they're going to go out and cheat, uh, thinking that it's going to punish you. And then you cry your big crocodile tears. Um, and you say, you know, you, you, you asshole, you slut, whatever. You cry. You get kicked out to the curb. And then the second they close the door, you hop your ass up and run down the street to the next quality person. So... Uh, that's how you break up with them. And like I said, peruse the channel. There's uh, some more in-depth information on that as well. Uh, it's called Stacking Ammo. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I, I hope this helps you out. Please like, comment, or share. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you on the next video.